today is the second day of the event, and I'm happy to present uh, Sergio Sánchez Padilla and Diana Laura Fernández Hernández, and uh, unfortunately, Tania Mora Pavón is not going to be able to make it. So um, we have Sergio and Diana. And uh, they're from Mexico. Uh, they're going to be presenting. This is the first part, right, of integrating interactive contents on a web platform for TESOL online. So uh, I, uh, um, please, everybody, uh, I'm going to be letting you in. As I let you in, please put your microphones on mute. And as soon as we you get in, this session is being recorded. So if there's no problem with that, you're most welcome to take part. And, um, and yeah, that's it. I give you the microphones. It's all yours. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My, my name is Diana. And today, we are going to show you a project to teach us several English topics. Well, are you ready? <laughs> Perfect. English Cortex is a website that allows you to keep materials and activities in order to keep uh, in order for students. It's a good example of what we can do in our classes. English Cortex use some apps to mention a few of them. We have a Jamboard, a Google Slides. Google Forms, YouTube Video, Word Wall, Genially, and more. And first, we are going to show you the project. And then you will have the opportunity to create your own project, OK? Uh, the next one, please. OK, before I begin, I, I need to ask you something. What apps? do you know and use in your daily class okay please uh, it's time to share with us and and for that activity i need to open the follow page slido is www.slido uh, please Okay, I'm going to uh, take a, a, a little time to to enter a, a page, please. The next one, please. Okay, in the slider, it uh, has to 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 get a, a code. This is a code. It's seven three zero seven one five, and you have to enter here in this part. And please answer the question. If somebody has a problem, uh, you can uh, put in the chat. Remember all your classes. Remember what do you uh, use? Okay. And I'm going to show you the results. Okay, we have a Google Docs. Oh, very good. So perfectly. Flipply, Quizlet, oh, Quizlet. Yeah. Kahoot. If you don't have to, if you don't uh, want to enter to Slido, you can put the answer in the chat. That is correct too. Padlet, okay, very good. Another application. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody typed so Minecraft. Perfectly. There are lots. <laughs> okay, remember, remember all that apps, okay? Please, uh, Professor Sergio. All right, thank you, teacher Diana. So now it's my turn to talk about the theoretical background that supports our project, EnglishCortex.com. So how do we maintain what we do in terms of theoretical issues? Well, our EnglishCortex.com project is inspired by cognitive linguistics. And some of you might be wondering, so what is cognitive linguistics? What does that have to anything to do with the teaching of English as a foreign or second language? Well, before I answer that question, I'd like to hear more about the public, the audience that is here with us today. And in order to do that, I'm going to ask you to, to please answer these other slide do questionnaire. Please head to go to www.slide.do, just like the one that you were answering with teacher Diana. And please enter the code 108989 that you're looking at on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to show you on the next, on the next slide what you've got to do once you make it to slide dot do please enter the code 108989 just the way you were doing with teacher diana so i'm going to give you all um let's say 30 to 50 seconds to access this slide do website so that i can see your answers and the questions let me remind you are uh the following what is language what is grammar and what is cognition i would really love to hear your own ideas about these three different concepts. I'm going to give you my own personal opinion, perspective, point of view of what I think according to cognitive linguistics, language, grammar, and cognition are. But before I tell you what cognitive linguistics has to say about these different topics, I'd like to know some ideas from the public audience of today. So I hope some of you are already typing by now. I am going to open this slide to survey. Remember, it's double 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 you dot slide dot do once you open the website just enter the code 108989 all right so let's open this um survey and see if we are if we already have any uh ideas from the public so uh what is cognition a couple of you uh in the audience have already answered uh it is to acquire all right so Exercising our human cognition has to do with acquiring, in this case, language. Uh, some of, someone else typed knowledge. Yeah, that's true. We all have knowledge of the world, and that has to do with our human cognition. Uh, there's a third um, point of view. It is what students get from being exposed to different contents. That's a very interesting definition. Let's see uh, what answers we've got for uh, the other questions. Oh, here is another one, processing information and making sense of it. So yeah, I think I think that's another interesting uh, idea. Now, what is grammar? I don't have any uh, answers for grammar and I don't have any answers for language, but, so, but that's all right. That already gives me a general broad idea of what um, all the teachers that are here today with us uh, have in mind whenever they think about cognition. Okay, so let me go back to my presentation and continue saying what I'd like to say about this particular very interesting issue. So cognitive grammar. Cognitive grammar was developed by Ronald Langacker in, back in the 80s. Uh, it's been almost 40 years of research by Ronald Langacker and many other researchers. And according to Ronald Langacker, let me show you on the following slide. Language can be understood in terms of two different dimensions that you can see on the right side, symbolic complexity and schematicity. That means that any particular language of the world, you know, there are about 7,000 languages in the world, any one of them is being uh, analyzed in terms of prototypical lexical units that is here in the, in the, at the beginning of the corner. And we move all the way up to grammatical rules, which are more schematic, that is to say more abstract, and they acquire an increasing symbolic complexity. 
So we have this general idea that the lexicon and grammar are two separate categories, uh, independent one from the other, having nothing to do one with the other. But Ronald Langacker says that this is a wrong idea. What does Ronald Langacker has to say about the lexicon and grammar? All right, um, just to make this uh, somewhat more understandable, let me explain this in terms of a continuum. So what is a continuum? A continuum is what you're looking at here in terms of colors. So how do we go from yellow to red? Where exactly can, could we draw if we wanted to? Where could we draw the line that separates yellow from red? Should we draw a line over here or maybe over here or maybe over here? Where exactly should we separate yellow from red? Actually, within a given continuum such as this one, there is not such a place, or such a line where we can establish the difference, a strict difference between yellow and red. This is a continuum that stretches from the lexicon on, on the one hand all the way up to the grammar. So this continuum is very important for cognitive grammar and cognitive linguistics on the whole. And that's what has inspired us to design this project, EnglishCorpus.com, that we will be showing you today. So keep in mind, please, this image that I am showing you right now. We have lexicon on the left side and we have grammar on the other side above. Um, so I'm showing you right now what our website, EnglishCartex.com, looks like. This is, of course, a zoomed out perspective. And you should notice that first contents are heavily uh, reliant upon semantic fields, such as body parts, animals, fruits, vegetables, emotions, actions, nature, kinship, everyday activities, colors, personal information, clothes, school, city, home, health, etc., and so on and so forth. So the, the idea that we've got behind this project is that our students need to have a very strong lexical input before we move to more grammatical abstract constructions. And this is the, ver the, the very first part of the English Cortex.com website. But then in the second part, we have all six more modules, but they increase a little bit the semantic complexity, the, the level of abstraction that uh, the different topics at hand are being discussed. And then little by little, progressively, we move to increasingly more abstract topics. You can notice that in the pre-advanced to module, we already tackle topics such as predictions, facts, appointments, goals. You know very well that it has, this has to do with the construction wheel. Uh, for example, a prediction, it will rain uh, tomorrow or uh, my friend will become a great lawyer in the future. Those sort of constructions are more abstract. They have to do with more co complex, complex constructions that we usually term grammatical units. And finally, we've got the highest level of abstraction um, in the advanced levels of this project. We have the advanced uh, scope with perspectivization, retrospection, prospection, and introspection. So that is, that is uh, on the whole, uh, broadly speaking, the, the way we have organized the contents of this project. We go from very uh, specific lexical items with very specific semantic content and we progressively move to um, abstract con grammatical constructions. So uh, just to summarize what I've been saying for the last five or 10 minutes, uh, please bear in mind that uh, this is the image that we have in mind when we have been building this particular website and project. If you would like to know more about um, the underpinnings of this uh, project that theoretical background does support the English Cortex.com project, please visit my personal website that you can see below. You can take a screenshot or just write it somewhere. It is www.circusagispadia.com uh, slash academic slash production um, dash production. So um, if you would like to join this project, uh, this is an open invitation for anybody willing to collaborate in this particular project that we will talk about today and tomorrow. You can join by registering in this Google form registration form that you're looking at right now. We will copy paste the address uh, that you're looking at on the chat uh, in a moment. 
Uh, but you can also take a screenshot of it if you would like to right now. Now to move on, my uh, friend and teacher, uh, Diana, is going to continue talking about the project. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, Sergio said, uh, we can see the English Cortez has a different levels and topics and are many ways to use the English Cortex. I'm going to show you one of them in the real class. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, in this case, we have a season, uh, a season in, in Zoom. Uh, and the topic was the body parts, okay? The next one. The activity was a game first. Uh, then the students have to order the words uh, in the body as showed you in this picture. And, and then the student share the activity in a jam board. For, uh, in the next one. We can see the, the video. Then the students practice their pronunciation with Bokaru app. The student uh, has to, uh, to, to record your voice and that is the result. I have two eyes, I have two ears, I have two hands, I have two legs, and I have one nose. I use my head to breathe. I talk with my hand. My legs are strong. My eyes are brown. I have two hands that tell me feel. I have two feet that tell me work. I have a nose that tell me a bit. I have two eyes that help me see. Okay. And how can you create your own to your online learn uh, site? I really I am going to tell you that I really love Google Sites because it's free, it's easy to use, flexible and responsive. Now it's important to uh, to make a, a website, but I need to take a, a, a time and take a piece of paper and pencil or a pen. And and the first step uh, to do that is to think about think what I what I want to think what I uh, what I uh, want to for my website what I want, what I need, and who is going to use it. Think about it and try to write the ideas in the next three minutes, okay? Think about it. What do you want for my website? What do you... What do you want to to to, to learn, to, to teach, and to share with your students? Try to explain. Write everything. Everything you you, you think. Ready? Are you ready? Okay, if you want to to turn off your microphone uh, and you tell us what do you think?
someone Okay, Karima's, Karima Biski says, a website is a way to get some useful resource. Okay, very good. Uh, Dina, material for my students to learn in a fun way. Yeah, okay. It's used from all kind of audience. Yes, it's correct that. Okay, you need a, a two websites, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know. Okay, I need to know how to use it. Okay. A lot of ideas. Well, Okay, students and teachers, I going to use it. Okay, I want to interact with my students. It should be easy for my students. Yeah. Who has an experience of websites to do it? A website. A website. Someone? WordPress, okay, very good. Okay, it's time to work, okay? <laughs> Uh, we we need to search a material and elements that we can use, like YouTube videos, pictures, as useful, and whatever you need. Okay, keep it keep that in mind. Okay, uh, in the next one um, slide. Okay, we have a, a video to explain how. Okay. Hello everyone, so here's my guide on how to create a new online learning site. First of all, we can go to slides.co.com, then compare and paste images, choose and paste videos, select and paste interactive videos, click and paste interactive games, and assign a quiz with instant feedback. So how do I do all of this? I gotta go to Google Sites, which is at sites.go.com, and I choose a blank template, which I already have over here. So now I want to paste an image. I have chosen this one for by parts. I click on copy image. I go back to my Google site. I paste it here. I drag it a little bit just to make sure that it is big enough for all of my students to see well. Then I go to YouTube and I have chosen this particular video that I think will be good for them to practice their pronunciation. So once again, all I gotta do is just paste it over here. I insert it on my Google site and I can move it where I feel it's going to look best. When I go to ISL Collective and I choose an, an interactive video, I have chosen this one. I have here this option to embed. I click on everything that is right inside. I copy that. I go back to my Google site and I insert and wait for it to appear. Once it's already there, all I gotta do now is try a little bit here so that it looks complete and then move it somewhere else so that it's in the middle and I think that looks better. Now I want to go to worldwall.net and similarly to what I've been doing, I go to more, embed, and then I click on everything that is here. I go back to my Google site and then again, I just gotta paste it here. I click on next, then insert, and there it is, you already have an interactive game that is ready to be played. And then here, if I go to this particular website that I like for interactive assessments with instant feedback, I just gotta copy the whole website. Then I go to my Google site and I paste it here. I wait for it to load, I insert it, and I have already gotten this exercise embedded here. So all in all, I already got 
an image for my students to study a video for them to practice their pronunciation and interactive game so they can practice how much they've learned thus far, an interactive game, and finally, a sort of quiz, a quiz for their own assessment so that they can see how much they have been able to learn. And that's it. I hope that you like this video. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Diana, you are mute. Uh, I can't. We can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Fine. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow we are going to show you a, a lot of tips that we can learn. Uh, and but before tomorrow, we need to look for to search a uh, videos, a uh, websites, a uh, pictures. Um, and whatever you need for your website, okay? Uh, this is a, 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 a short time uh, to, to look for uh, a videos and, and the websites and the pictures, okay? Try to try to, to, to search a, a, a YouTube, please, a YouTube video, a pictures in this moment. Thinking a topic, please. And try to look for. Uh, I think this is where you want to tell them what they need to prepare for tomorrow, right, teacher Jen? Yeah. All right, so here's the list. Um, this is what we need you all to bring for tomorrow, please. Uh, of course, most of you most probably already have a, a Gmail account, but please make sure to, ha to have one available for tomorrow. You know that we have the second part of this workshop for tomorrow. And if you want to learn how to design your own personal website for online learning for your students, it will be very important that you have a Gmail account. I guess most of you already use one, but if you don't, uh, we advise you to please get one. Secondly, we need you to find pictures of vocabulary that you want to teach your students. Thirdly, uh, we would like you to please choose two YouTube videos that you think will be very helpful for your students to learn or improve their English language skills. And uh, some of your favorite websites, uh, we all know different sites that offer different resources and you and we would like to see what your favorite websites websites are and finally if there is any app or software in particular that you would like to add to your online learning website please uh prepare it for tomorrow prepare the, the link or the instructions to get there so that we can help you uh, incorporate and integrate such uh, contents into your own personal website um so, teacher Jenna? Um, no, that's all. Only a keep and save the, the links, the pictures, and everything you need in your website, okay? Yeah, so I think this is a good time to hear from the audience. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Just a second, please. Yeah, so, so, so that's the end of our presentation, but we would like to hear from the audience what comments, questions um, they might have. So please, uh, we open up 
we open it up for everyone to ask um, anything or comment anything, please. Well, by the way, well, uh, yes. well, uh, I wanted uh, just to make it clear. I didn't know that we were going to do this. I think it's so interesting. So. Uh, we're going to be making our own website. Is yes, that it? that's, that's the goal. Oh, by the way, I I'm, I offer you all an apology. I forgot to show you our own website so that you can get a feeling of what you can achieve once you start developing your own website. So please let me share my screen once again. So this is the website, EnglishCartex.com. Uh, I'll leave you the link to this website in a moment in the chat. And the first thing that we find here is that you can integrate these GIFs, these images that have some motion. Uh, it, it makes it more attractive for uh, younger learners and I think for everyone in general. And here is the sort of uh, general view of the name of the website, which is English Cartex. I could talk to you about the, the origins of this particular name some other time. But what, what I would really like to show you is that we already have these uh, modules composed of four thematic units, uh, which I already showed uh, from a general perspective uh, about 10 minutes ago. And we move, uh, we move little by little from very basic black lorry, such as the one you're looking at right now, but then we uh, progressively move to more and more abstract black lorry that uh, slowly advances to the first pre-advanced modules and finally to the advanced uh, modules here um, at the end of this um, particular website. So this is the, the, the entry page of our website, but then let, what happens if I decide that I want to learn basic vocabulary such as body parts, fruits, animals, and vegetable, vegetables? Well, all I got to do is click here. Uh, let's pretend that I am just a regular student. This is the very first time that I am going to learn any one of these different um, lexical fields. And I have one introduction here. Uh, it's a very, very short video. It's one minute and 31 seconds that explains what exactly uh, I am going to find here in this particular module. So let's say that I want to learn the body parts. You know, there are a number of students who have not learned all of the body parts yet. And I think this will be very useful for them to learn. Uh, I have another, we have another video here that explains what they've got to do here. Uh, we try to keep them short because we know that the attention span of most students is really short. So this is just one minute and five seconds. So uh, my, my students and our students in general will not be uh, bothered by such a short, brief video. So the, the first part of this um, thematic unit incorporates a couple of images that presents straight straight away what we want them to learn that are uh, for especially for either uh, false beginners or beginner students uh, this is very um, useful vocabulary uh, head eye ear hand arm leg etc and we have digital books that i think most students find very fun to play with these books we try to keep them easy because this is just uh, the beginning module we don't want to show them anything that scares them away so they will find all the vocabulary here uh, at the first glance so they start becoming familiar with all these different words um, there is another digital book and if you click here you will find even more pictures and digital books having to do with the body parts then we have a section for youtube videos where our students can practice their pronunciation so for instance this one uh, let me play this for a bit. Uh, well, I don't have my sound on right now, but but the video is saying phase, phase. So my student has a chance to pronounce eyes, eyes, because each word is, is, is pronounced twice. Ears, ears, uh, nose, nose, etc. So this has a two-way benefit. On the one hand, um, our students are getting some sort of audio um, input. They are hearing what the pronunciation of each of these words is. So in the future, they will have fewer problems recognizing these words when they listen to them. Secondly, uh, on the other hand, 
they um, are able to have a chance to pronounce each of these words on their own at home or whatever they are working. So they are both uh, learning uh, at the receptive end of the spectrum how to recognize these words. And on the other side, they are articulating with their own articulatory system each and every one of these words. So these are the YouTube body video section. And then we have the interactive body videos. These are interactive games that our students can play. Uh, some of these are made in a way that uh, the student has to click on a certain part of the video in order to uh, demonstrate that he or she or, uh, has already learned a particular word. For instance, here, uh, it says click on the body. So I, has, I have to click um, on some part of the video where the body is. Then I click here and continue. I have turned up the volume, the, the music, so that it doesn't bother anybody. Uh, but then uh, as we wait, this pro progress bar moves uh, slowly to the second question where uh, let's see what uh, the question is to head. So now I am going to be required to, as a student, I have to answer. So where is the head? If I click below, the system is going to tell me as a student that, that it is a wrong answer. Let me click below just to show you. So I click, if I click below, you can see that it says, oops, that's not the right answer. So um, I guess you can imagine how much fun students have playing these sort of games where they are not just passively, but actually actively learning the vocabulary in a way that it's fun and engaging for them. So it's a similar story with the other two interactive videos that are here below. If students click here on more interactive videos, they will find more of these. Uh, here in the presentation of this module, there are only, only three different um, interactive videos, but they can find many more in this button. Then we have interactive body games. For example, let me show you this one. Of course, I have uh, some brief instructions over here. Let's say that my student wants to, my student wants to start with number eight. So mouth, which is the mouth? Of course, it's this one. The system is going to instantly tell him or her that that's the right answer. Now let's go with four, nose. Let's say that my student has not learned this word yet. So maybe he thinks, he or she thinks that the nose is the second one. So of course the system is going to tell him or her that this is not the nose. And, and that's going to show there that it was not correctly answered. And then face, well, I'm just going to click the, the right answer. And we have tons of different other interactive games that students I'm sure will love playing with. We have inserted here two, four, six, eight different games that are embedded on our website on the module, the thematic unit for the body parts. We also have a special, some special activities with Minecraft. This is a very, very immersive um, software that allows students to move around a virtual world that we, this, we will talk about this tomorrow. And finally, we have these uh, interactive quizzes where students are able to um, check how much they've learned. For instance, here, so I, I'm given the different uh, options. So of course, these are the eyes, and then secondly, these are the ears, and then the lips, uh, sorry, the mouth, and then the nose, and then the hair, and finally, the whole uh, head. And then as a student, I'm just going to click on check, and I'm going to be told that I have 100% of the answers correct. And so I hope you're you, you're um, appreciating uh, how interactive everything is here. Uh, we've got, first of all, some images that present the topic. We have a video that explains the whole thematic unit. We have digital books. We've got um, videos for pronunciation. We've got interactive videos. We have interactive games. We have an interactive, immersive world in Minecraft, and we have uh, assessments, quizzes with instant feedback for students. So that's the that's part also of the philosophy behind the English Cortex.com project that students really in, enjoy uh, learning English, that they really feel that this is something fun to do and they don't uh, find it tedious or boring or unattractive to learn English online. And of course, this can all also be adapted to be worked out uh, on a face-to-face -face setting on site, uh, but that's up to each and every uh, teacher. So let me stop sharing my screen now. Um, there. So yeah, that, that, that's the, the, the broad general idea of what we would like everyone else to be able to achieve. We would like 
many other teachers, as many other teachers as possible to also either build their own websites or to join and collaborate on this particular pro project that we've been developing for the last three or four months, more or less. So I'm going to send everybody the, the, the registration form link so that if anybody is willing to join this particular project, you can do so. It's already there in the chat. Um, and well, I'd like to hear from anybody, um, any comments, any questions, teachers? I think Karima was asking for the link on the, maybe she was asking for the EnglishCartex.com link. So let me, let me copy paste that one on, on the chat, please. Just a second. There. We still have about 15 minutes left. So any questions are more, more than welcome from the audience. Hello. Well, I think this is a fascinating idea. I mean, I never thought I could do something like that. So maybe I'm going to be able to learn. That's so, I don't know, it's so, Difficult for me to imagine <laughs> I could do something like this. Uh, so when we choose our pictures, uh, what, like what kind of pictures should they be? Like the ones that you had of the body with, with the parts of the body around it, would that be a possible picture? Yeah, of course. That, 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 picture? Yes, sure. Yeah, of course, that uh, entirely depends on what your goals and objectives for each particular page are. Uh, as I explained at the beginning, our theoretical um, foundation is cognitive grammar. We are arguing that if we really want our students to speak fluently without any grammatical errors, with good pronunciation and so on and so forth, first of all, they got to have a strong lexical basis which is what Ronald Langacker argues, that before we can actually move on to more abstract grammatical constructions, we gotta have a strong, rich lexical basis upon which to build the more abstract constructions. So if, if, if you are working with um, students who need that uh, particular input, uh, the lexical input, I would suggest that you go for those types of pictures. But you could also be working probably with more advanced students, probably students who want to certify their English skills, either with uh, a TOEFL test, a FC test, CAE test, or, or a CP test, or even an IGRE test for entry into a United States or Canadian um, graduate program. So maybe in that case, you could prefer to use other types of images. It is not necessarily the case that you have to include such uh, basic types of images. Probably you want to include um, pictures with advanced vocabulary. Maybe you don't even include visual input, a sort of a picture of a person or a place, maybe just the words and, an, and a definition. Uh, that's pretty much up to the, the, the each and every teacher that has different goals. Um, uh, and I, I, I hope that I have been able to um, answer um, your 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 question, teacher. Yes, and Carla Carpio is asking, he's saying that's interesting. What do you need first to create a website? Do you need to register? I, th I think Diana uh, would love to answer that. <laughs> yeah, uh, only I uh, we need a, a Gmail account. Uh, Really, the, the Google site is free. It's completely free. Okay, uh, and that's all. And and very and and you need a, a your pictures, your 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 video, the YouTube videos. Uh, think about and think about in in a topic that you will see with the students. For example, if you want to to see the simple path, 
for example, no? You're, you have to, to, to take a material of simple past and you have to save all of that information in your computer uh, or, or save your links or save your pictures that you need to, to for tomorrow <laughs> in that case. No? See, think a topic. It, it, it's, it's, it's easier. Really, really, really. It's easier. Yeah, I would like to add to that. I think that the very, very first thing that you really need to uh, get before you start is um, not being afraid to click on everything. I think that's the number one issue that every teacher has. Every teacher that was not such a huge fan of technology before the pandemic. Uh, I know a few teachers who were afraid to click on the power button of their computers because they felt it was going to explode or something. And once you ask them to please try to create their own websites, of course, uh, these fears become all the more, um, what, um, increase in terms of how much anxiety this creates um, on them. But um, I would really like to insist on the fact that you've got to relax and take it easy and just uh, dare to take your mouse and click on everything and, and just play with it and find out what exactly you can do with each and every option that Google Sites is giving you. Everything I showed you on the uh, EnglishCartex.com project is entirely made using Google Sites. Of course, we are integrating contents from World World Net, YouTube, uh, ISL Collective, uh, Agenda Web, etc. Uh, but but that's something that you will find little by little as you um, dare to do it more and more often. So I could say that's the very very first thing that you gotta do. You just gotta dare to do it. Um, I think there's a saying uh, that goes along the lines. You never know what you're able to do until you try, right? So you just got to try. Um, it's just as simple as that. But just like teacher Diana was saying, the first, uh, in practical terms, the, the very first thing that you got to do is just get a Gmail account. And, and then you just got to type sites.google.com. And, and you should be there within just a couple of minutes. Uh, let me type, by the way, the the, the, the web address for, for sites. Google.com, just in case uh, anybody has that uh, particular strategy. Uh, so I have copy pasted on the chat uh, the web address, uh, sites.google.com. Uh, that's just about it. You just click over there uh, and, and you should be ready to go and start designing your own website. Tomorrow we will try to guide you and you come back tomorrow with us. Uh, we will ask everybody to try to do it. And if you have any questions, if anything is not going right, uh, you will have one hour to, to ask anything you want to learn how to do it. Uh, is there anything else you would like to say, uh, Teacher Diana? No, that's a... no? <laughs> I have one more question. I find it a little bit difficult sometimes to make material for more advanced vocabulary, as you were saying, no? Um, yeah. So you were giving the idea of maybe putting the word and then the definition. And well, in this program, they would also be learning how to pronounce it, no? Because there are some words that yeah. obviously aren't so easy to pronounce at first sight, right? Yes. So that would be the way then for more advanced vocabulary. Yeah, and I would also like to suggest that one more thing I think you could and should do is provide students with enough context, uh, which may come in the form of a text. Um, I think most of us at some point of our lives have tried to memorize vocabulary uh, out of the blue without any context, just taking a list. And that has, of course, worked uh, in many cases. I, I uh, it has worked for me taking just a list of vocabulary and just uh, repeating uh, by heart, uh, memorizing by heart each lexical item with its definition. But we know very well that does not uh, does not always the best strategy to learn new vocabulary. We need to have a contextualized um, setting. 
So I could also suggest that uh, if we want to teach advanced vocabulary, we include texts and of course different strategies such as questions about the text. Uh, or, or inquiring about the different senses and meanings of each uh, of several words that are within the text, maybe relating that text to other texts that have the target words that we have in mind, that sort of thing. It, it is not necessarily the case that, that Google Sites, um, from what we have been telling today, should restrain or ref uh, uh, yeah, restrain only to uh, pictures and and isolated words. I think there is so much more than we can do. The, the limits are, as they say, the imagination. Um, there's just really so much that we can do using Google Sites. Um, and I really, really hope that more people um, will to do it, um, as opposed to refraining and feeling fearful about, oh, am I going to mess it up? Am I going, am I going to... Um, break it down or something like that. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that that helps um, answer that particular question, teacher. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, I don't know if we, have, we still have a few minutes. Is there something else you would like to um, add to pre like to prepare us for tomorrow? Uh, well, I, I, I guess I could insist on, on the list uh, that we gave. Uh, let me give you the list one more time before we go. Um, so for tomorrow, if possible, please. Um, let me go to here is the list. So for tomorrow, uh, please um, prepare. Uh, I know that, that you have busy lives, but if possible, please prepare. Make sure that you do have a Gmail account and choose a few pictures of vocabulary that you would like to integrate on a website. Try to choose two YouTube videos that have something to do with the vocabulary that you would like to teach. Uh, try to find a website that also has something to do with the vocabulary that you would like to teach. Or if it's not vocabulary, you probably... Uh, wish to teach something else, maybe a grammatical construction or a cultural um, content. And also, if there is any app or software that you think could help uh, to achieve your goals, that um, that's something that, that you should have prepared. You should have prepared for tomorrow, if possible, please. And finally, I would like to say that, um, that if you find this, um, if uh, in spite of how much we're trying to make it look um, easy, if you feel that this is not as easy as we're trying to make it look like, uh, you are very, very welcome to join the project uh, that I mentioned. Uh, just register in the um, Google form that I gave you um, in the chat. And I will be very happy to um, invite you to the meetings that we have. We are meeting once a month, uh, only once a month. We meet to uh, discuss what contents we should develop in the EnglishCartridge.com website. So maybe you can gain some insights and experience in building a website of your own or collaborate in the EnglishCartridge.com website as well. And I think that's, that's, that's what we need, practice. You know, practice uh, makes perfect. And I think that's what we all need, just to practice as much as possible. Uh, Karima Biskri is asking, Gmail account, do you mean? Um, you can use either an institutional Gmail account or a personal Gmail account. Personally speaking, I prefer personal Gmail accounts because we have full control of what is possible to do with that account as opposed to the, the different restraints that the administrators of institutional accounts set on the those types of accounts. For example, if I want to transfer uh, one website from one account to another account, it will be more difficult to do so if I am using a, an institutional account. So I would suggest that you use a personal Gmail account. But if you only have an institutional Gmail account, that's also fine, both of them work uh, perfectly fine for what we need to do tomorrow. Uh, 